keeping records of what you're doing is going to be very important. Even if you don't like planning things out every little bit, you do want to record as much information as you can either before or afterwards. Um, you can write down what you plan to do first, or you can do the spell and then write down what you did, how it actually turned out. Or you can do both. You can write it down beforehand, do the spell, then write down what you actually did. Did you change anything? Did you add anything? Did you omit anything? Um, did things crop up that you had nothing to do with you, but it happened anyway, and how did that affect it? Um, and the reason why you want to write things down is how else are you no gonna know that it really worked the way you wanted it to. Sometimes you'll even forget that you did the spell if you didn't write it down. Other things in life happen. We get busy, we get sidetracked. And, you know, magic isn't always the forefront of our minds. That's just how it works. Um, you know, you get busy with school, with work, family issues, whatever. We're not always thinking about the spells that we performed and, oh, did this come to pass yet? Did it happen in the time that I needed it to? Um, so having things written down so that you can go back on reflect on it is great. Um, otherwise, you really have no comparison. You don't know. Um, you can try and remember, but memory is fallible. And it's also, memory is subjective. Our ideas of how we viewed ourselves when we were young or younger don't match up with what we thought of ourselves then. You know, memories of certain events change as we get older, even if that's just a matter of, you know, a few days or a few weeks. Sometimes it's years or, you know, nothing is constant. Our minds are always changing how we interpret and store information. Um, so I often find it helpful not only to have written down what I did before and after, or one, at least one of those, but every once in a while, whether that's a few months later or a year later or whenever, just sometimes go back and reread the different spells that you've done. Um, think about how it worked. Did it work in the way you wanted? Did you want it to work after a certain amount of time? Or were you like, oh, actually, I hope that that's, that doesn't happen. Um, or did you just not care anymore? Because um, that can give you an idea of where you are with your spells and whether or not you need to think about things more before you do them. Um, another thing with writing spells is how much you don't always have time to write them from scratch. Modifying spells, which we've talked about in a previous video, is okay. Um, it's very unlikely that you will find a spell that someone else has written that is perfect in every way for you to perform to get what you want. It's not likely. I can't think of a time that that has ever happened for me. You'll need to probably change words. Um, maybe it rhymes and you don't want it to rhyme, or maybe it doesn't rhyme and you do really need it to rhyme, because that's just how you are. And sometimes there will be words that you don't know. Maybe you can look them up, but the word sounds great, you just didn't know what it meant. And it, you want to use that word, but you should know what it means. Um, Sometimes it's a word that you don't know or don't like or it just you feel weird saying it. You should probably change it to something that means either the same thing or something closer to what you intend and use that instead. Um, sometimes it'll call for certain symbols that you're not familiar with, so you probably shouldn't use them without researching them first or changing them to something that you are familiar with or more comfortable with or that resonates with you better. So don't just take a spell that you don't understand and say, oh, this says it's going to do this, so it'll work, because it won't. Almost never. And even if something happens, it won't be exactly what you wanted because each spell is slightly different for each person in each situation. Um, pop culture, again, can 
really fit into spell work very well. Some people feel like it's not something they want, and that's fine. Um, other people do find ways to incorporate it into their work, either consciously or unconscious subconsciously. Um, and sometimes it's something that you incorporate regularly into work, or just occasionally. For example, I have a shrine to the Goblin King. Yes, the Goblin King. Jareth, the Goblin King. From Labyrinth, played by David Bowie. That probably seems weird to a lot of people, whether they practice witchcraft or not. It's a movie, made in the 80s. We all know that that was played by David Bowie, and not a real Goblin King. I have a shrine to him. One, David Bowie's fantastic, but it's not really a shrine to David Bowie, even though that's who I always picture as being the Goblin King. I find that to be a very important archetype, and that particular symbol of that archetype of the Goblin King, which does have, you know, the, that archetype of a, you know, the Goblin King who steals children and grants wishes and dreams and all that sort of stuff. There's a history of that. There is a long folkloric history of that. But, for some reason, this particular modern incarnation of that speaks to me and is important to me, and I can't stop thinking about it a lot of the time. So, it felt right to make a shrine to him. So, I made a shrine to the Goblin King as played by David Bowie. And it's a pretty awesome shrine. I know other people who have been particularly attracted to um, Morpheus, Dream of the Endless, from the Sandman comics. And that's awesome, because he's pretty cool. I'm particularly fond of Death of the Endless. I don't have a shrine to her yet, but I probably will. So you don't have to automatically discount popular culture in your magic. It doesn't always have to be about ancient arcane symbols of forgotten lore or about your the symbols that would have been used by some hedge witch back in the pre-medieval days of Europe. We live in modern times, and whether we intend to or not, that's going to affect how we do our spells, whether we're even aware of it or not. Um, that's just a part of how human psychology works. <laughs> Um, another thing to keep in mind, um, is when spells work, how well do they work? Did it work exactly to the T of what you had imagined, or is it a little surprising, a little different than what you had expected? But it worked so great! <laughs> or maybe you needed to tweak it so that it works a bit better. Um, and you want to write that down, because you're going to forget eventually, probably, most likely. If it doesn't work at all, or if it something completely different happens, that's going to suck, usually. Um, if something happens that you didn't intend to happen, that can be a bit jarring, and sometimes it can be downright bad. Um, it can be a negative influence on what you're kind of disrupts things. Um, so you might want to go revisit that spell and change it a lot. Or maybe change it a little and that solves things. Um, or maybe you need to, you know, rethink whether or not you really needed to do that spell. Um, uh, a lot of the times, and I usually almost forgot to actually mention this. Um, I work very solitary, so I just kind of go to that by default, um, both because 
I'm very introverted and very private about my life, usually, and because I just don't have a person or group of people to work with in spell work or magic that um, practices similarly enough to me that I could work with them. But maybe you do. Maybe you want to work with other people and collaborate on something. Maybe you really don't. Maybe you've tried that and you're like, I never want to do that again. Or maybe there's something in particular that makes sense for the spell that you're doing. Maybe it needs to be done with a group of people. Maybe that will help. Maybe that's just a distraction and you kind of need to take some time and just do this on your own. Um, how often uh, does one perform spells? Is it something that you do daily? Weekly? Monthly? Yearly? Maybe a few times a year? Um, maybe you don't have any set schedule and it just happens whenever it happens. Um, I find a lot of the time in the beginning, when first starting out, I did spells pretty regularly. Um, you know, maybe like once a week, just to get the practice. You know, that doesn't mean do spells that you don't actually need to do. But maybe you can find little things throughout the day, here and there, that you can do little spells for, just to get the practice of doing spells. Because if you all of a sudden come across this big, huge thing that you need to do a spell for, and it's really important, um, and you don't have much experience with writing or performing spells, that's going to be an issue. Um, you're not going to feel confident. You're not going to know what you're doing. So get some experience before you go off and do some huge ritual. <laughs> Um, and do some research. Um, uh, though I find as I've gone on, I don't perform spells as often because I don't need to. Um, I try not to go too long without doing it because, or at least researching and thinking or somehow being involved with spell work and magic because otherwise I kind of miss it. Um, and you can get a, you know, out of practice, you're not in that mode of thinking about things, um, and you can get a little sloppy. But, you know, I don't do a whole lot of spells, um, usually about once a month. And sometimes I forget, or don't have time, because I'm in school right now. Um, during the summer, at least once a month, usually two or three times a month, I'll be doing either some sort of um, spell or ritual or just taking time to devote to thinking and studying magic and spell work. 